this is Ashley Gaska. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to avoid plagiarism by paraphrasing with a double entry journal. To begin, why is plagiarism wrong? Plagiarism is a massive problem in the academic world because it's the same thing as cheating. Plagiarism comes in many forms, such as copying and pasting directly from a source, using AI to generate answers, changing only small details from the original source, or translating from another language. All of these things get in the way of your learning. You won't be able to improve if you rely on cheating. But paraphrasing can help. Paraphrasing is when you put information into your own words. However, most students don't know how to plagiar uh, paraphrase. Here is an example of a common paraphrasing error. Keeping the same words, but rearranging the sentence. So here is an example. The original quote is, Theo kept Vincent's letters with great care. Vincent was less careful. He threw lots of letters away or burned them. This is from the Van Gogh Museum. Now this is how this sentence would be improperly paraphrased. Vincent was less careful than Theo, who kept Vincent's letters with great care. Vincent threw lots of letters away or burned them. You see how I took the same sentences and I just rearranged them or added tiny bits here and there like repeating Vincent's name or, you know, altering the structure. But essentially, this is still copied. It's just barely changed. This isn't your own thoughts or your own ideas. Let's look at a different type of uh, paraphrasing error. Paraphrasing error two, keeping the same sentence structure, but changing a few words. Again, here is the original quote. It's the same as last time. Theo kept Vincent's letters with great care. Vincent was less careful. He threw lots of letters away or burned them. Now, if I was using this incorrect paraphrasing technique, I'm keeping the same structure, but changing a few of the words. Theo maintained Vincent's correspondences with great care. Vincent wasn't as careful. He disposed of lots of letters or destroyed them with fire. As you could see, I'm using the same exact sentence structure. I just used synonyms for the words that they used. So I'm not actually paraphrasing. I'm just using synonyms. It's not the same thing. Now, let me show you my way of paraphrasing that can ensure that you do not plagiarize. So, the first thing I'm going to do is open up a Microsoft Word document. It doesn't have to be Microsoft Word, it could be any uh, word processing program, but this is just my preferred one. So first, I'm going to set up my double entry journal. To do that, I'm going to table and I will add two columns and however many rows. The number of rows isn't as important because you can always add more. And then at the top, I'm going to put direct evidence and then my thoughts. So I'm going to get the information for this from this article from the Van Gogh Museum that says Van Gogh's letters. I have this little selection of how many read about how many letters he wrote, and I'm going to copy this middle section. Many of Vincent's letters have survived, and even some of the replies. The total correspondence features 903 letters, 820 by Van Gogh, and 83 to him. By far the most letters are to his brother Theo, his best friend and loyal supporter. Theo kept Vincent's letters with great care. Vincent was less careful. He threw lots of letters away or burned them. So now I'm going to paste that direct evidence here into my chart. 
then on this side, I'm going to type some of my own thoughts. Hmm. I wonder why Vincent didn't keep his letters the way Theo did. Is, oh, whoops. Was that because of a lack of space in his home? Or was he less sentimental than Theo? And then I also wonder why Theo supported Vincent so passionately. Because I know that Theo took care of a lot of Vincent's life from my background knowledge. Even though Vincent didn't experience a lot of success in his life. Now, when I take my background knowledge and add it to what I've read, that's very a very helpful way of putting things into your own words, thoughts, and ideas. So try to use some of that background knowledge when you can. So now that I have my own thoughts about the evidence, what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to synthesize those things. So if I want to paraphrase this selection relying on my own thoughts and ideas, I might say something like this. Vincent van Gogh wrote many letters, which we have learned thanks to the meticulous way his brother Theo kept them. Vincent was not as fastidious as his brother and usually threw his letters away. Perhaps it was Theo's great love, support, and belief in his brother that led him to preserving his letters so carefully. So I'm making an inference there. I'm inferring that it's because Theo really loves and believes in his brothers, so he's holding on to these letters. Now, let's say that there is something that you want to quote directly from the text. Let's say you feel like you can't word it any better. The way the text wrote it is absolutely perfect. Well, there's a way you could do that by using a direct quotation. Here is an example. Vincent van Gogh wrote many letters, which we have learned thanks to the meticulous way his brother, Theo, kept them. Vincent, on the other hand, threw lots of letters away or burned them, showing us that he wasn't as fastidious as his brother. Now notice that I took this part that's in quotations directly from the original text and I put it in quotation marks. Now at the end of that sentence, this is how I'm going to finish that. I'm going to put parentheses and within those parentheses, I'm going to name my source. Now, if there's an author, this is where you would put the author's last name. However, for this source, there is no author. So I'm just going to name the website title, vangomuseum.nl. And then I'm going to add a period after that. Notice I moved the period from the end of the sentence to after the parentheses. This is the correct punctuation for in-text citation, which is what this is called. Now I'll continue my sentence. Perhaps it was Theo's great love, support, and belief in his brother that led him to preserving his letters so carefully. Or perhaps he was simply sentimental. So you see, I took what they gave us. I took that Theo kept Vincent's letter safe. Vincent did not keep his brother's letter safe. Um, but I put it in my own words. I made my own inferences. I used my background knowledge about how much Theo loved his brother. So we can really see that we can take a source and make it completely our own by paraphrasing it. And I really relied a lot on these notes to help me process my thoughts about that source. So let me show you what I would do if there is more than one source. So if I'm using multiple sources to write about a piece of information, 
I'm going to try adding another column and I will show you why. In this column, I will name my source. In this column, I will put my direct evidence. And in this column, I will put my thoughts. Now this is going to be the same exact thing as the previous example that I showed you, the previous double entry journal. The only difference is this time I'm going to put the link to my source at the beginning of each piece of direct evidence I use. Now, if all four of these come from the same source, I'm only going to put it one time. But when it changes, I will put my new source in the spot where it changes. And I'll show you what I mean. So here I found another website about Vincent and Theo's letters. Let's say that these are full of sources and my thoughts. And I'm starting here. Now, starting from this piece, my evidence and thoughts will be related to this source. So, to summarize, we need to avoid plagiarism as much as humanly possible. But if you don't know how to avoid plagiarism, it can be a bit difficult. However, using this technique of double entry journals, you can take what you read put it into your own words with your own ideas and supported from your own background knowledge and make it into something original. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope it has been informative for you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.